evil dies tonight. Next October. Evil ends tonight. Oh, yeah. Is Can't that, wait for that. If they, if they actually say that in the next movie, I'm going to laugh my ass off. I'll already be evil done with the end. next movie at that point. I'll just be like, okay, I don't need to see this. <laughs> evil ends tonight. I, here I am making a joke, but watch them do that. They probably will. I mean, what? Oh, yeah. Halloween 2018's was Face Your Fate. Halloween Kills was Evil Dies Tonight. I don't know what ends will be. Face the fact that evil dies tonight? I don't know. And I don't know. I don't know. It'll be something dumb, guys. As good as mine. But uh, we are about to do a casual commentary on Halloween thrills. <laughs> and um, we're going to have a good time. Again, talking about the positives talking about the negatives in our opinion uh and just whatever the conversation kind of leads to nick i was i was i was wanting to ask you something so i barely do halloween content on my channel anymore this past um month or so i've done more halloween content in in this month and probably the last three years on my channel i i just don't do a whole lot of halloween somebody that does a lot of Halloween because I get it. You're you're a big fan. You're a Halloween fanatic and stuff. Are you ever burnt on Halloween? Like right? Like do you ever just say to yourself, like you know what, man? I've got to I've got to do something else for a little while. Well, I intentionally stepped away from Halloween for a little bit because I knew that my channel was going to be littered with it in October. So I stepped away for a little bit, and I've been pretty much doing Halloween this month just to you know, capitalize on everybody talking about it for sure. But yeah, yeah, definitely. There are times where you get burnt out and you're like, all right, I'm just about done. It's not that you, I don't love it or anything. I absolutely do. But there are times where it's like, I like, if I'm being honest with you, I'm actually really looking forward to the Christmas season because I think there are some banger Christmas horror movies and I cannot wait to talk about those. Um, but it's gotta be appropriate to the season and we're not there yet. Um, but yes, I, I definitely have times where I'm like, I never want to rank the Halloween franchise again. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm going to make the one I just did last until next year. When the next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you got to. Dude, everybody likes those rankings. I get it. Look, YouTube, you definitely learn what videos people want to see. And there's nothing wrong with giving the people what they want. But there is also a point when you're when you're the video creator where it's just like, I I'm gonna blow my my head off. Um, <laughs> but th- I have th- this is my third time watching Kills now. I've seen it twice. No no no, excuse me. Th- I've seen it three times. I've seen it three times. So this is gonna be number four. After this, I'm done for a while. Yeah, this is number five. I told my wife that earlier too. I was like, we're watching it for the commentary, and then I think I'm done for a little bit. So. Probably till it comes out on Blu-ray. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Because then we'll actually have a reason to because there'll be deleted scenes. And I wonder if it's going to be a director's cut. Well, David Gordon Green has kind of alluded to that, but he won't call it a director's cut. So I, I don't I don't know. I would. I think they, that'd be cool. They better. Don't give us just the scenes. Make it a director's cut, for God's sakes. I want to see what the initial intention was, you know, I hate, I mean, there are certain circumstances, obviously like the Dr. Death footage. I get it. I would love to have had the movie have that in there, but something like this, there's no excuse. Give us the director's cut and theatrical cut. Boom. You know, just please. Like was the intention, David, like was evil really supposed to die tonight? Like we have to know, you know, um, there's a lot to dig into with it that I think would be cool. I don't think they really held much back in terms of gore. Uh, so I don't think we have to worry about that. But, you know, story choices, because obviously we know that they changed their minds before the film was even finished about how this was going to end and where the story was going to go. So what was the original intention? You know, it'd be cool right. to kind of dig into that. Yeah. Well, I guess we're going to get started. <laughs> yeah. You guys ready? Peak October. Oh man! All right, Nick. I'm gonna hit play real quick. And all right, so right now I see the big U coming across the globe of Universal. Okay, hold on. 
I gotta get there. I just got the Peacock logo. And I'm at 16 seconds. If you want to get there, that way we can give the people a second. I mean, they can pause this. This isn't live, but just let me know when you get to about 16 seconds. I am seconds. at 16 seconds. Okay, guys. So here, if you hear us now, let pull up your peacock. Pull, pull up, not pull out. Pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> pull up your peacock. Get it to 16 seconds. You should see the big U making its way around the, the planet Earth on Universal. I'm going to count us down. In five, four, three, two, one, play. Oh my God! Hmm. Let me make sure I got subtitle subtitles on. You know, I love this theme. It's called Logos Kill. I think it's so '80s, so Carpenter. <laughs> Logos Kill. <laughs> yeah, it's called Logos Kill. Yeah. I have come to a decision, though, on something. This is personal, but I have come to this decision. I do like the multiple pumpkin. You do? I do. I do. I mean, it looks good on a big blown-up TV screen. Like, when I, when I was watching this, this the third time in the living room, Pitch Black House, I thought it looked pretty cool. I, I think cool. I don't know if I like 18 better, but I don't think it's that bad. But when you really get to look at the pumpkins... The designs on some of them are pretty pretty cool, and the font, the original, like right here, Universal Pictures Miramax. That font looks so seventies, just like the original. I love it. Yeah, I'll always say, no matter what people think of these movies, you can definitely tell that David Gordon Green was doing this as a labor of love to Halloween fans for sure. Who's skirt boy? Skirt. The entire movie, this man wears a skirt. Kudos. He was in, uh, what, what was I just watching him in? You. Uh, oh, he was in you. Yeah, you as well. And dude, yep. he was super talented in you. Yep. I've, I'm only on, uh, we've, we're, we're up to episode six now. I've seen the first five episodes of it. <laughs> Oh, that dude got a blistering death right there. I love how this turns from like, hey, dude, you okay, bro? To like, oh, shit. Yeah. Just look at this guy's face. Like, this is already a step up in acting from 18. He genuinely looks like he's, he's playing this scene off really well. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's fine. I, I guess there wasn't much meat on the bone with him in 18. He shows up. He's the boyfriend. He's talking to the dad. I guess, I guess automatically, even though I'm not a father, but I guess in that scene, I'm just, my back's up against the wall with him because he's the boyfriend of the daughter. And I guess because I knew Lori Strode and here's a weird psychological thing I'm trying to say. I take the position of the parent at that dinner table, as opposed to the kid. So, like, I already didn't like the boyfriend because he's, like, dating the daughter. I'm like, who is this punk? Yeah. You know? This dude should have died. Like, dude, he got wrecked in the neck. How is no, he alive? What should have happened is they should have never let Sartain do that in the first film because Hawkins was the best character. He should have never been put in that situation. So now they have to, like... Oh, he didn't die. He's just really badly injured. Yeah, you should have never put him in that situation in the first place. You should have known what you had with Will Patton. But, dude, I've gotten to where I freaking love this flashback scene. I think it looks so. Doesn't it, it looks like look 80... just like the streets of the look... eighty one Halloween two. The back lot. Yeah, I was gonna and... say it looks yeah. more like it. It looks more like eighty one than seventy eight. But that kind of makes sense because hasn't this technically this is as had her ordeal it, technically right so this is like the alternate timeline halloween too well this is the same this is 78 yeah but it's right after he was shot off the balcony and fell and then presumably was on the loose in haddonfield right right that's what I, that's what i'm basically yeah. getting at i just want a movie about this right here man can you imagine that oh that'd be cool as hell 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say a good portion of the money spent from this budget was for these 78 flashbacks, like straight up with all the set dressing you have to do, the uniforms, the cars, all of it. Yeah, I see that. I see the old, old cars right there. And I wonder where they filmed that. Did, uh, didn't, did Sean Clark do a, yeah, well, it's the same. HHG it's on this. I think it's still Wilmington, North Carolina. I think it all was. I mean, I live in the Midwest, so I can tell you there's back alleys and stuff like this in every town, in every neighborhood. I mean, I've, yeah, yeah everywhere. They're not hard to find. Just, it was perfect location, man. These kids are assholes, man. Chucky. Yeah, they're brutal. That is the <laughs> that kid right there is just where'd they find him? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> and what's he supposed to be? I have I guess a human. I don't know. Yeah. Ugh. Broad, what are you doing licking at? Yeah, I I just don't understand why she has to slap him too. Like that's a little bit overkill. I guess, dude. I guess they. Fi- I guess they figured. Well, they can't get mad about these kids and not complain about the Halloween Four kids. Yeah, the Halloween Four kids are the worst kids right. I've ever seen. <laughs> Shit! I would have been like, get, "Let me get a cop car." Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> You're gonna let make us children walk? Lonnie's misunderstood, man. Yeah, but people had an issue with this flashback part because he was a dick in the first one. And now they're like, they want us to sympathize with him. But it makes sense for the Lonnie that you get 40 years later. But Uh, I I can forgive it. I watched 78 and I'm like, you're so mean to Tommy, dude. Dick. Oh, you know that hurts. What kind of candy? You got that bag of brown M and M's in there? I'm trying to see what kind of candy he had in that little <laughs> pumpkin pail. Oh my god, dude! Unpopular opinion. I think they should have used James Jude in the flashback. Who is that? His name's Aaron something. It's a different actor, and I I did I don't agree with it. I don't understand why. Why didn't they, why did they not use James Jude? I don't know. I genuinely don't. Well, I didn't know that. Yep. Why did they use Nick Castle? Beats me. Dude, I just want a whole movie of this. Just like I really would have like that shot Dude, is this so is so good. awesome. That Look shot is house. so good. I know. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. I did a video today on Halloween, and I was just like, dude, the flashback scene has become my favorite part of the movie. It's just, I it's, watched it's it. It's the best part to me. I love You're, this whole You were telling people thing. how we were theorizing about the, the ghost song. Oh, yeah, man. I remember when I, when I was... Lee had told me uh you know he was telling me what he had thought about the movie before people are seeing it. i had told lee as well i was like dude listen to that song and just let me know if this song is a clue to the movie and he was like no but i can totally see why because this lyrics sound like it was about him going to the graveyard to dig up his sister or something yeah. you know i mentioned that on my live Maybe. yesterday about how i wanted to see that and no one said a word about it and i was like was that too far like <laughs> i just thought dude n- nothing's too far after my uh Halloween, Halloween, uh, the real Halloween, yeah, the, time <laughs> the real Halloween three theory. <laughs> oh yeah. Dude, they got this house looking just killer. Yeah. Also right there with that cop just did underrated that he checked the corner in a closet. He still did it. That's a heady move right there. Do they no? Do they do they just build this house for the movie or? You know. Yeah, this was built on a lot. Um, I don't know if it was in North Carolina though, but it was built on a soundstage, and uh, 
So everything next to it is just like a facade. It's not even real homes. Um, and I've actually seen people on Twitter like talking about how, oh, you can totally tell it's not a real neighborhood. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like maybe if you pause it and you like really nitpick, but like, dude, no, I think it looks great. Just wanted to mention that the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score for this, I think, was like in the 40s, but the I think the audience score is 68 on, on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is 38. 38, excuse me. And that's how you I, know you've uh, got a good Halloween movie. I mean, oh, I mean, I just, I, I get the critics, what they were nitpicking at, which is some, oh my God, damn, that dude, my, dude, this is the best Michael I've ever seen. Besides, well, I don't want to get into it, but like this scene right here, dude, this Michael <laughs> is freaking awesome. It's the best, dude, the fact that he holds it, this is genius. Michael holds him as a hostage. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I, when I finally, when I saw this, I was like, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That is, and look at that mask, man. Oh yeah. And can we talk about how Hawkins is an awful shot? Like, dear God. Dude, he shot him dead middle. Dude, he shot his esophagus. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right the- Dude. There's Michael. And- look at him. He just sh- walks right out. I can buy it, but thinking to myself, in the few seconds that you don't see Michael, he did book it down the stairs, and then as soon as the camera cuts to him, he just, then he goes, I've yeah. seen parody videos about how Michael Myers catches up with you. <laughs> it's where when you yeah. run out He's of running off the camera, him, yeah. He finally runs. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's something, for instance, Pizzle had a problem with this, and I just want to get your thoughts on it. Not that we're, not that we're, I'm, I'm disagreeing with Pizzle's take. It's his opinion, like we all have. So, uh, actually, you know what? Well, we're kind of foreshadowing, but screw it. Uh, and this isn't just Piz. I've heard a lot of people say this. So, Hawkins accidentally kills his partner, but, you know, the fact of the matter is they should have been covering each other in this in this room. I don't know why they split up. It's so asinine. If I was a cop, I would be like, dude, you're keep your hand on my shoulder, you know? <laughs> like, don't get out of my sight. So, he accidentally shoots his, his uh, partner. He's about to get in trouble. Loomis is about to shoot Myers. That's a whole other can of worms, right? Because Myers really can't die by the way this movie seems. But he's okay with covering up what really happened. Now, the, the, the gripe about this is it seems like, why does he have a conscience in one aspect of not wanting Michael to get shot, but he's okay with covering up <coughs> the truth about what happened to his partner? Do you have a problem with that? Do you think it's just no. a... What no, I, I, and the, the, it's no disrespect to anybody that has that opinion. The, the way I look, by the way, I want one of those Strobe Realty signs. I'm going to track one down. Um, I want a, I want a statue figure of that, that Meyer standing like that in front of the house. Yeah. That looks so freaking good. No, the, the way I look at it is, one, Hawkins didn't mean to do that uh, to his partner, obviously. So, like, you know, yes, he, he, he knows how it's going to look if – it is revealed that he accidentally shot him. He could, people could look at him as a murderer when it was a complete accident. And in that situation, he needs to take the shot, whether he, if he misses or not, he's got to try to kill Michael to save his partner. But on top of that, his superior. Hey, real quick, quick, Nick, Nick, I'm sorry to cut you off. Nick, do you notice some of these pumpkin faces? Look, some of them look like Halloween too. One of them look like the Jack Lantern face. He turned the human into an 18. Yeah, and you the, got, you if know, you look at the faces them, right? close, yeah, for all twelve movies, there's yes. twelve. Of them. Yep, nice little nod. Yeah, yeah. I, I, anyway, it, it is it is really cool. Continue. I didn't mean to but, cut you off. No, you're good. I just think it was more or less his supervisor was basically like, "This is what's going to happen because you could make us all look bad," and I mean that's a supervisor, like you know, and it wasn't intentional. So, you know, you take the good with the bad there and say, okay, whatever. But that maybe is another reason why he was so adamant about Loomis not shooting Michael because of what had just happened. You know, like, how could you bear witness to two murders in one night in front of your face? How could you feel responsible for two? That's what I'm saying. Maybe he feels responsible, obviously, for his partner. He doesn't want to feel responsible for Loomis killing Michael. So I get it. Underrated. I love these scenes. I really do. I, I love their camaraderie. Hey, 
I think they have really good chemistry, everybody in the bar. Kyle Richards is awesome. Yes, she is. I feel bad for uh, Brian Andrews a little bit, man. He did not. I, I, he, I keep up with him on Facebook. He did not. He had not dealt with this very well. Not getting this part. Yeah. Well, you know what uh, happened there, right? Yeah, kinda, they did. Favorite, Nick, just come down your TV a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I I know that they reached out. You may know more than me. Let me tell you what I think I remembered seeing, and you tell me, you fill in the pieces. From what I remember him saying, they reached out to him, and he kind of didn't really say yes or no. But he's like, I want to talk with an a. I need to get my. I need to get an agent or something involved. And then I think the, they kind of just said, you know what, kind of never mind, kind of thing or something. And then they moved on. That's what I think I remember him saying. I don't know the, what the other side of that coin is, but that's basically it. But ahead. the process that he was, he w- it would be a process for him because he hasn't acted in 30 years and Blumhouse had a time frame. We have to start shooting by X day. You know, if you can't be ready by then, then we'll have to go with someone else. And, you know, part of that is Brian's fault because he has not acted in three decades. So he didn't have an agent. He, you know, I mean, you've seen he's let himself get away a little bit. Kind of looks like a mountain man. Um, you know, so there there would have been work. Got, Rob know? Zombie's Halloween. Yeah, I, I loved him in, in 78. I thought he was a really good kid actor. I really did. But it is what it is, man. I mean, Anthony Michael Hall acts totally fine. It's just his dialogue that he's given is bad. I, I'm looking him up right this, now. This. Okay, so his. How do I feel about this scene? Yeah, the whole spiel that he gives. Uh, big mistake. I, I would have not had his first piece of dialogue been about Michael Myers. I wouldn't would have seen him just talk with his friends, get to know him a little bit, get behind him as a character, give us some humanizing. Uh, relatable things to talk about, except just Michael Myers. I haven't seen the audience, especially the longtime fans, haven't seen from Tommy Doyle, supposedly, because you got to get rid of the other movies, in a long time. We want to know what he's like now. And just talking about Michael to me, it just distanced me from him. F- instead of just, like, if I would have seen him at a restaurant where he got his name called, and it's like, Doyle, Tommy, and he gets his food, and he's with a friend, or he's with on the phone talking to somebody, or he's doing his job, just something to let me see what he's like as a human, as a person. I would have much preferred that as opposed to here's Tommy Doyle talking about Michael Myers. I I thought that was a mistake. We don't even get to know who Tommy is 40 years later. It's just immediately thrust into Tommy talking about Michael Myers. Oh, this is Tommy Doyle, by the way, guys from, you know, the first one. So yeah, I totally agree. Give me some character to him first. Yeah, I do love me some Lonnie, though. I, th- I talked about this, too. <clears throat> he's great. I mean, he he is... I think he's... Honestly, I, I say the best actor, but I don't think that that's fair. I really think it's just he had the best dialogue. <laughs> I mean, because Brian Doyle Murray is a great actor. Look at some of those great movies he's done. He knows good timing. He knows comedy. He knows how to do his deal. I, you know... Kyle Richards, she came out great too. Somebody said something that made me laugh. Uh, somebody said Kyle Richards' acting hasn't left the seventies; like she still acts yeah. like the seventies. I'm like, well, that's a positive to me, you know. Uh, my my thing with it know. is, yeah. and then I like Karen. Lonnie spoke like a normal human being in this movie. Half of that dialogue you just got there from Tommy Doyle for his speech was not how normal people talk. Like it was just weird. But Lonnie is like so carefree and like he reminds me of one of the clown cops from Halloween five. Like, man, he's just trying to live his life. And then this Michael Myers crap starts again. 
part of the thing with me about the bad dialogue, you know, there there are there are people that they like the bad dialogue and they think it makes it a a good bad movie or like a like like slasher films in the past. But the thing about it to me, and I, I respect that. I respect that people see it that way. It feels disjointed to me because you have characters that make perfect sense and talk so well in this movie, like Lonnie. And then you have other characters that repeat evil never dies. Excuse me, evil never dies. Evil dies tonight over and over. So it feels splintered. If it was more cohesive as a, hey, no, 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 we really are being a little silly with this and having fun, I would make sense of that more. But it feels so disjointed at the same time. And it seems so serious with the music and everything. So I, if I could fix the dialogue, I'd have little to complain about. Oh, yeah, I'll address that, what you just said in a sec, but I love how this dude's face just disappears. <laughs> oh, my Pay attention, guys. Him, Look, that's a hole. <laughs> it's just a hole. That's his brain? Yes. I love it. I, I love Brutal Myers. But, no, yeah, I agree with you. This movie was meant to be taken seriously. It's competently made. There's some A-list actors in it. I don't take it as a movie that was giving this dialogue on purpose to seem less serious. No, I take it as Danny McBride lo love him as a comedy guy, but he still is working out how to write serious stuff. And it shows because some of the dialogue just doesn't sound organic. This is like one of the best shots of Myers. I think we get in this entire <laughs> franchise. Dude, uh I love it. I just love this gore and this intense Myers. I want man. a poster of that. I appreciate right the, there. the Yeah. That shit. But is so somebody cool. was saying something like somebody was saying something like we need to make movies more suspenseful and not gory. I agree, but I think you can have both. You know? I don't you think can. you have to take one or the other. Uh, by the way, when I was watching this with my wife, she goes, Oh, that's ridiculous. That hose would have blown him back. I was like, it's Michael Myers. He's not really a human. He's not human. <laughs> She's like, it doesn't matter. That's just physical. Oh, he lifted him up, dude. Mm. Uh, did, did, you, did you see that? Did you see after he lifted up the uh, the fireman? It's very subtle, but after he lifts up, he drops him and he takes that thing and just throws it down. Like, yep. done with that. Very subtle, but I caught it and I loved it. <laughs> dude, James Jude Courtney. I'll tell you what. Man, he's a pimp. so good. So good. Oh, boy. Back to the hospital. By the way, everybody watching, and I hope... Oh, That's Brad. okay. This was a missed opportunity. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. Why do a close-up on him and have him recognize that Lori's there and we never get a moment with the two of them? Just missed opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I mean, also, it's like they zoom the hell in on his on his uh, name. Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. We don't know who Charles <clears throat> Cyphers is. Like, we know it's him, man. Yeah. This is another thing that I think people talked about they appreciated in this movie is that you finally got to see Karen and Allison realize that, you know, Roy is dead or Ray is dead. Um, yeah. cause they didn't have a reaction in 2018. Now you actually get to see them clearly affected by his death. Uh, yeah, dude. And Karen's, uh, Judy Greer, that moment where she was cleaning her hand and she saw her ring and she had that moment of like, Oh my God, I just realized my, my husband is dead now. Like it, like all with all the craziness, it's not that she forgot, but she actually had a moment to take it in. Boom. Yeah. So good. I, I love Judy Gur in this. This is like Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 hospital scene right here. You get some close-ups on some gnarly, gnarly gore. I eat it up, man. I eat All, it up. Although nothing beats that surgery for Lori and Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. That is disgusting. When they pull her fingernail off. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that was good stuff. <laughs> Shout out Judy Greer, guys. She wore a Christmas sweater for two damn movies. You know what she said oh, man. when she showed just, up to Halloween Kills day one? 
She was like, the first thing I did was make sure that damn jeans and Christmas sweater still fit. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, here we go. Some people don't like this scene. Now, is this... I, I like it. Is this supposed to be the new age? Um, yes. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elrod. Elrod? Yes. yes. I love the fact that they're an interracial couple. I, I just, because I love this woman. I think she is fucking hilarious. She's flying. Oh, yeah. She's like a senior citizen flying. A, <laughs> she's flying <laughs> a damn drone. And I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do it different, man, just do it different. Like, don't repeat this. I respect that at a certain point. It's like, don't just. You... But here's another thing. Like, here's another thing. I was like, this movie does want you to forget about all the other sequels. But at the same time, it does remind you about damn near every single sequel. <laughs> yeah, but, fashion. but to the people that, like, have a complaint about that, all I say is they're not canonizing those sequels they're not saying hey guys this is just like them no they're saying hey fans this is a nod to those movies that yeah we're not acknowledging they exist but they clearly do so you know what i mean like it doesn't bother me yeah and i and i appreciate i can i can't appreciate that i can appreciate that um dude i just love the michael i, I don't know how many times i gotta say it I love the fact that Myers in this movie is a sick son of a bitch. Dude, these two people die a brutal, just death defying yeah. death, especially the old man. My wife you know? goes, but this, but the thing about this there? to me Why was, I was my, like, that's Lori's neighbors. Like he just left the burning house. I take it at, he's probably in that bathroom bandaging up his hand. Cause you see his hand is bandaged. I can kill him. Like just what was he does. Was this woman on her phone? Was this woman on her phone watching a movie, Nick? Dude, no, not for the most part. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> He's beating the piss out of him. <laughs> this is the best part, though. Right? Oh yeah. Oh Jesus! <clears throat> Here's what I don't understand, though. I do have a gripe about this. She's got the door unlocked. Run. Run. Your husband is dead. I guess she figured what the hell. Yeah, but she doesn't even try to fight back. She just grabs a knife like, you better not come over here, Michael. And he's like, I'm going to come over there. I love the fact that they showed, oh, dude, that mercury light bulb. Brilliant. This is, oh, God. <laughs> I don't know, man. Dude, this one really is like Rob Zombies because some of the things that I noticed this film does too is during the crazy scenes. Did did you notice the POV shot a minute ago when it was it was oh. like to the far left of Mrs. Elrod, for lack of a better term, because I forget the character's name, and it's like looking from like behind the or something like it's a POV yeah. shot. My, Zombie did that a lot in uh -huh. his movies, and the shaky camera during the kills. I love that because it makes it feel more gritty and real. Yeah. That, that this one does it too. And I'm not saying zombie invented that, but clearly I think that Gordon Green is showing some love to the fans of the zombie films here, especially this one, this, this entry kills. None of it was in 18, but this one in kills. I do feel like my, maybe I'm completely wrong. But I, in my opinion, I think David and them were like, let's let's show some love to the fans of the of the zombie Myers, you know, movies. Yeah, I mean, you would got to think about it, man. Th those two movies were they're in the top five highest grossing Halloween movies. Like, there's a very vocal group of people that don't like them, but they're two of the most successful Halloween movies. So there's definitely a fan yeah. base for them. So, You're damn right. <laughs> and I feel like this is totally in character of, of Tyler Maine doing this right here Thanks. oh yeah Arrgh! every Dude, time he is the... as he's grabbing each knife he's like looking at it before he's like hmm will this do or oh, that'll do like the child side of michael myers that we get in this movie just great yeah uh, now here's something i'm wondering right now as we're going back to the bar scenes right now is this movie going to look better than what it does like picture quality on 4k i really hope so because this streaming service, the streaming it, kind of looks like crap, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, it 
it looked better than this in the it, theater. I can tell you that it definitely did. When I the first time I watched it on Peacock, I noticed a difference in quality from the theater. So yeah, I would it it'll be good. better. Thank God. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember man. what I because I. I, I don't think this is streaming. This is a 4K available stream anyway. I'm sure it's just 1080p. There's some stuff like HBO. You can do 4K streaming and stuff. And I mean, when you watch 4K streaming, it looks damn good. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited just to see this movie. By the time it comes out after tonight, I'm not going to watch it for a while. And then when it comes out on 4K, I'm going to get it. And I want hopefully I want to see a much better presentation because I, I saw it in the theater advice. too, but I don't remember what it looked like. I took your advice and I pre-ordered the uh, steel book already. I'm not trying to miss out on that. It's just, a, I mean, yeah, dude, look at the thing. I mean, that, that was gone. I mean, I pre-ordered screen yeah. too. And from Amazon, but I'm, I'm still waiting on that, man. Apparently Paramount was just had some kind of big problem with uh, getting those in or something. Yeah. That's Lonnie. Oh. That's a jack o' lantern head, dude. How freaking evil is that? No, hey, no, Nick, Nick, that jack o' lantern head, some uh, one of those pumpkins was carved like that in the intro. Yeah. So I know that's the one I noticed more than anything. I was gonna say about that jack o' lantern head, that head of lantern. Uh, I don't know if it was Tots that came out with it. I think it was Trick or Treat Studios came out with. Um, it's not a mask. It's just like a replica of the prop. And I saw it at Foy's when I was there the other day. It was a hundred dollars. It was one hundred and twenty dollars. But he like took it down off the shelf and showed it to me. The detail is insanely good. But I was like, I ain't paying one hundred twenty bucks for this. Christ, that's <laughs> Jack Leonard. <laughs> it's just a shame, man. I do not like the Trick or Treat Studios mask at all. And I'm not paying to get somebody to fix it because it's just like I'd rather just pay it, pay it the first time. But I like this movie a lot. But I'm not going to buy a mask. I'm not gonna buy a mask. No, because it just it just it's not good. Their 2018 mask was good. The kills mask is not good. If you guys own it, awesome. I, I, I do have you. I do have another gripe, but this is a personal gripe. I get it. All of you guys love the new kills poster. I agree that it's a step up from 18. But man, I want that class. Back image, Halloween kills at the top in the font from the intro, and take one of those pumpkins from the from the title sequence and just put that sucker boom right in the middle of the poster, and you know do something like that. I wish they would have done classic old school Halloween posters. So, but I get it; that doesn't sell anymore. The Halloween kills poster now is eye catching if a normal person is that a bus stop and it's on there or something oh yeah that looks great what is that oh halloween oh my god i get it but damn i like those old posters so much yeah there's the karen on the on the uh news station this is the safest place to be it's supposed to be a quiet town oh karen i got news for you the shit will be hitting a fan in haddonfield tonight <laughs> oh man! Yeah, we'll get we'll get some cool alternative posters soon enough. She should have realized that somebody was in the car when she saw all the fog the on the window. Fog. This part's great though. His reaction is like so me. I'm not trying to play hero. He's backing up. <laughs> Hell no. Are you kidding me? I'm not. If it actually is that dude, you know how many people he's killed? I'm not going after him. All right, guys, you ready for the first Old evil Huckleberry. guys tonight? Dude, just have a gun. You know. See, you know, here's the thing, Nick. If we'd have seen a part of Rusty Griswold, Tommy Doyle's life, and something about how he 
needs fulfillment. He's lacking in this or that to explain his desire, not necessarily even need, but clear desire to want to fight Michael or like have this moment in his life. Then it would make sense. You saw how eager he was to be like, oh, yeah, let me grab the bat. Like he wants to do this. A little exposition, I think, would have helped. But we just got none of that. I agree. But the counter argument to that, I would say, is I felt like I didn't need exposition, at least for that part of Tommy, because he was obsessed with the boogeyman in the 78 movie. Obsessed. So I do believe that he would still, especially after encountering the boogeyman, after being obsessed with him the whole movie, I do believe he would be this eager to go after the dude. Like, I, I really do. Um, I mean, I can kind of meet you halfway in that, but it was Halloween night. And he, he's a kid. I mean, it was Halloween night, you know? Yeah, but I mean, all of his, all of his worst fears came true. And, you know, he probably is trying to compensate, too, because he was such a pansy in 78. He was so scared. Whereas now he's like, I'm not scared of you anymore. Like, okay. he has something to prove to himself. And that, almost. Yeah, and I and that's fine. I can see the tr I can see the timeline of that. But Jesus Christ, give me a give me a little bit. Oh yeah, we need more know exposition this guy, with him. You know? Period. I don't. Yeah, I haven't known Tommy Doyle in forty years. I need some more to his character. Like, it's just like Cameron in twenty eighteen. He's kind of he's a side character, but he gets more screen time than your average side character. But you get no meat to him at all. So it's like I'm supposed to care about this character like oh man look, look at, at the house. myers house now man yeah. i love this guy i was telling my wife i was like he is so you and i am so little john like i thought we were gonna watch a movie and she's like oh i want to get high and listen to records i'm big john and Lo love these dudes i'm little I can john get i can't help it i just always want to watch movies always yeah Dude, I, I can see how people just like they get confused big time by this movie because I mean this movie it it at times is the shining it feels like and then you go to stuff like this and it's just like you know it's the writers just overthink <laughs> it, man. They include stuff like this to create levity in in a horror movie, but they don't realize that they're they overdo it at times. Yet yeah, levity is one thing, but you're taking a little too far sometimes. This I don't mind right here this scene is fun well it's entertaining because yeah it's entertaining i like the johns you know i like i i like big john because he's clearly just not right in the head and he looks almost like uh he almost he looks a little bit like uh deputy uh or you know not deputy uh sheriff uh wydell a little bit if you gave him yes. facial hair <laughs> william forsyth yeah yeah, William Forsythe. I'm Forsyth. gonna say really quick. I was really glad that this ended up being a prank, because when I was watching this for the first time in the theater, and she was up there saying, "Oh, my friend," I was like, "This acting is atrocious." That little girl. Th this, and then luckily it's a joke, so I'm like, "Okay, I'm fine with it now." But if that were real, and she was, oh, that was atrocious. I thought you were going to say, Michael, because Michael killed the kid. I'd have been like, dude, I'm so glad he killed the kid. <laughs> dude, same. And I didn't even realize till like my third watch that the skull mask had the kid's head in it. You know what's weird, Nick? Th this is Miramax, right? Yeah, they're, they're a partner in it, yeah. Oh, I was going to say. Why didn't Miramax? Well, if this was Miramax, why didn't they have like a like a scream cameo or Ghostface, like a kid dressed up as Ghostface? But I don't know if there's some sticky water, sticky stickiness with that now because Paramount is putting out Scream. I think they purchased some of the library. It's Paramount Miramax did and something Spyglass. Where they, yeah, Spyglass and Paramount are doing yeah. Scream now, so I don't think Miramax is a part of it anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, something, whenever the Weinstein scandal went down with Harvey, something happened with Miramax and Dimension, and I think they were just selling properties left and right to their companies, you know. Yeah. And, sometimes and rightfully so. I have to so. look into that more, but I know that there was a lot of shit going on. They, they were, yeah, it, it was it was a mess. Yeah. Norm McDonald. Come on, little though. John. 
Look at the skeleton kid, man. He's great. You never see his face. Hey, did you did you watch um the Halloween three four K special features with the guy who ran Trick or Treat Studios on that disc yet? I did not yet. Uh, last night I watched the Halloween all the Halloween five stuff. Um, I watched. Uh, what else did I watch? I popped in four. Yeah, I popped in four again, but I haven't. I, before I did my video on all five of them, I popped them all in and I watched about five minutes to get the audio and vis- video to see like what it, how it's presented. Um, but I didn't dig into special features yet. The only one I dug into was five because I really wanted to see Dr. Death and I really wanted to see the uncut gore and, and, and the uh, interview with Robert Draper, the cinematographer. To do a weird edit my wife decided she was going to start streaming and it took my internet got halloween killed but i'm hot spotting my cell phone so now we're internet dies rolling. tonight <laughs> apparently honestly i should be doing this more often nick because i have good cell phone cell phone signal here so if i hot spot my wi-fi nobody can um nobody can get on my level or steal my internet now hey you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes man believe me you're, you guys already know my what my setup's like for you, Nita. Okay. <laughs> you got to do Y'all what you got to do. Y'all already know. I mean, Karen's right, though. Like, I get why Allison's frustrated, but, like, she literally is like, dude, we failed. We did everything we could, and we didn't stop this guy. What do you think you, Cameron, and Lonnie are going to do? Very sensible. Yeah, I would be and like, I, was, I we need to get a machine gun, stand in the middle of the street since Michael doesn't use a gun, and wait for him to show up and blast his ass. That's right. Although later in the movie, you see that guy load a empty a full clip in him, and it doesn't even matter. I think yeah. he shoots him six times. I really do. Which makes people also question: Would stopping Loomis shooting him in the beginning of the movie, or I say the beginning, the flashback? Would it have mattered? The only reason I say it might have is because that would have been right in the dome. I mean, Michael, I feel like if you take out his head, he's like a zombie. We've never seen his head taken out. And not only that, he is what seems to be more of like a a supernatural kind of thing. But his physical being, he still lost half his hand. Yeah. Yeah. And that didn't just pop back out. Yeah. So I don't know. We're going to find out. Maybe Halloween ends will answer some questions or just not, or just give us more questions. Who knows? You know? You know, Nick, I say look at the bright side, dude. Had COVID not happened, all these Halloween movies would be over by now. It'd be done. The journey would be over. Because Halloween ends would have came out already. Yeah, but then we'd be ramping up for the return of the Jamie Lloyd storyline at this point. So, you know, like... You really think they're going to do that? Um, do I think they will? Yeah, I don't know if I'd say that. Do I think they should? Yes. I think it would be your next best bet at a moneymaker to keep Halloween making money. Yeah. We can't kid ourselves. A big reason why these movies have been successful is Jamie Lee Curtis. Like just putting her name on it and putting her in the posters and in in the trailers, people are like, "Oh my God, it's Laurie Strode and Michael Myers." So the next best thing after this is done is Jamie Lloyd. Yeah, I still I still think you can make money with an original story with totally new characters because it's Michael Myers. But I don't. I I still think that if you want this to be close to the cash cow, it is. Daniel Harris is your next bet. Absolutely. And she, I just love that she's so game for it too. That's why I want to see it happen because she, we did not, although we both love six, that character did not get a good send off and it wasn't even Danielle. So I would love to see her come back. That's true. Just retcon six. I mean, shit, we have five timelines already as it is. Just make it a sequel to five. Has any of the I, which which time so what other timelines could we retcon? You could rec. I think it would 
probably just be Thorn, really, because you've already read. They retcon yeah. Halloween two. They retcon Halloween with this. Halloween H two O, Halloween Resurrection have both been retconned. <laughs> Halloween three has been retconned ever since it came out. So, I think the only thing you could retcon is something from Thorn. That's why I say, okay, Daniel Harris was in four and five, but not in six. So make it a sequel to five. I mean, let's be honest. Most casual fans don't even know six exists anyway. Like, so. I mean, would that be that they couldn't go to theaters with that though, right? Like, would, don't you think they would have to go to a streaming service if they made that movie? I think they could go to theaters, but I if think you'd a, be, I think you'd be looking at an opening weekend of like 20, 25 million, not 50. Um, but I still think you could go to theaters. What would they call it? Can't call it Halloween. They already did that. Yeah, but th- these people are paid to do that, okay? To come up with the subtitles. I, I don't know. But, but the- <laughs> hearing Ryan Freeman, the producer of these movies, say, literally said two weeks ago, spoke it into existence about maybe we revisit the Jamie Lloyd storyline down the road. He said it. So clearly there are preliminary, there's got to be some kind of preliminary discussions for that. I mean, there has to be an active producer on these movies. Wouldn't say that for no reason. So I'm not saying I think it'll happen, but I think that's your next plausible route. And we, we already talked about this Christian. It's either you, revisit Jamie Lloyd or you do a complete reboot with brand new characters. So, and that would make less sense from the do any time in the near future because of these movies, but yeah. Or did not even, does it have to be a reboot? What if just Michael gets caught at the end? Here's of the, the thing though. If he doesn't die and ends, you can make a, a pseudo sequel to this. You know, if Lori dies and Michael you can make the case he didn't die at the end of ends. Then, you know, four or five years down the road, say Kyle Richards survives or something. You know what I mean? You could always make a loose sequel to it and just follow different characters. So Halloween's not going anywhere though. By the way, can we talk about Marion and how piss poor of a shot she is? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, please. (laughs) And she's like, shooting throughout the car with two people right there like what are you doing i know she doesn't look i mean i think she's 70 what two 73 yeah she and she smokes bad. like a freight train why is she not smoking in this movie i know i don't know carpenter smokes in every damn interview he gives that man's been smoking for 60 years he yeah he he went if you look at him in Halloween, he looks his age. I think he was 30, 21, 21. And then yep. in a matter of like five years, he turned 68. Yes. <laughs> I loved that look he gave him in the theater when he was trying to choke him out with the stethoscope. And Michael's like, for real? Like, you're trying this right now? Okay. Why are these kids not taking... Dude, if a woman comes up to me, she says, you got to get out of here now. There's a killer. Why are these kids not freaking the... Sh- this poor Halloween 3 mask. See it dripping in blood. Yeah, man. Where are you at right now, Christian? I think I might be. I might. I might have got a little behind you. You already. Oh, you're already way past when she gets shot. Yeah. What did you do? You said forty three oh nine. Um, I've my. I think my thing might have skipped for some or something. I. Okay. You're already past. If you're just catch up to me. Yeah. I'm at fifty one nineteen. So I'll just wait till you get there. Okay. I see. So they haven't died in the car yet? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm with you. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. Lindsay's about to hit him with the bricks. Right, right. So we're good? Mm-hmm. Okay. That is a heady play by Lindsay, too, that she was like, let me think of something to do here. Also going for the mask. Underrated move by her, too. Yeah. She was smart, man. That was one thing I liked. If you're going to bring her back, don't make her some throwaway character. And I don't feel like she was. They didn't give her enough screen time, I don't think. But the time you do get with her, she, she's smart. I like seeing Michael in the woods like this, though. Yeah. She's easy on the eyes, too. So that's oh, always a great, plus. Man. Yeah. She's great. 
I, the only issue I have with this scene right here, ratchet up the music. Ratchet it up. Like, until yeah. he gets right behind her. And then have it stop and just have his breathing. But while he's, quote unquote, stalking her, ratchet that music up. Did you see... I don't know why this reminds me of that, but did you see this thing we got tagged in on Twitter about uh, there's a Nightmare on Elm Street TV show? Yeah, John tagged us in that. By the way, shout out John. Um, but I haven't seen any other outlet report on it. I just don't think that's true. I don't. I don't either. I don't either. Um, you know, I don't I don't fault John for for sharing it. I mean, if you come across it and you're like, oh, wow, like, is there any validity to this? I totally get that. But, yeah, I did research on it. I haven't seen a, a I haven't seen a word about it. And I spoke to somebody as I talked to you about Christian in the industry that told me that they are actively working, working on a pitch for a nightmare movie. It's a, it is actively a thing. So I don't. That's a great steel book, though. It is. I own it. I too. Was... Dude, look, I've got remake steelbook vibes over here. Oh, I've got okay. the Halloween steelbook somewhere, too. Rob Zombie's got a steelbook a few years ago, and I, I grabbed that fast, man. Yeah, that's it. Hey, what's on the back of it again? Um, It's just like part of the poster. Oh, I love that. Sherry Moon stripping. <laughs> The, yeah. I, the 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 Friday one, it's kind of it's not it's it's like they're kind of going for that old school kind of back in the yeah. day the silhouette, but on the back I love it. You get to see uh, the hockey mask, and then there's a killer shot of Derek Mears on the inside. Oh no, Will Afford. <laughs> no Will Afford. What's on the Dang. Nightmare one? I forgot. I was watching this last night. I gotta finish it. I fell asleep because I was. I think there's just, there. just oh, yeah. the claw. Yep. The claw. And on the back it says "Never Sleep Again." Ah, it's the front though is pimp. I love oh, it, the front. Yeah, of it. It's, it is great. But yeah, I got my uh, I got my Elm Street remake vibes going on. Christian's favorite Elm Street movie, guys. Did I really want to like it? I, I, I don't. Do, I do like it. I, I do. don't. I I don't like using the word. I hate this movie. I mean, I hate terrorists. I hate child <laughs> molesters. I don't hate movies. Some movies I really have a strong dislike for, but I just prefer not to watch movies. But, like, I just... And, dude, R Rooney is a pretty girl. I like R Rooney, Mara. But why did she not say anything <laughs> the entire movie? Look, man, if we would have gotten... I think most fans would agree. If we would have gotten a far more palatable Nancy in the remake, it would be looked at in a much better light. But because she slept walked through the entire movie, no pun intended, and then after the movie came out, talked bad about it, people were like, nah, dude, screw this movie. Like, and I get it, I get it, but I just don't, I don't, it's kind of soulless. You know, it doesn't really have a vibe. Um, uh, there's no real vibe to the movie um, or atmosphere, really, but I, I don't think it's a poorly made movie at all. I would right? have, if, it Look, if they would have made Freddie innocent in this, I would have been like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Would have blown my mind. When I was sitting in the theater watching that, I was like, dude, no way. No innocent. way. Yeah. And now because they hinted at it, if they ever do remake it again, which I have come to the I have come to my conclusion that they're going to re, if they're going to do it another nightmare. I want Robert back. I don't give a fuck anymore. Don't tell me he's an ancient old man. I want Robert makeup for that character. You I want Robert. Talk. I want Robert back. And I, I do just give me Nightmare on Elm Street 2018. Fuck it. <laughs> give me Nightmare on Elm Street 2018. No, Christian Bring wants Nancy back. Christian wants Alexandra Daddario as Nancy Thompson. I'd be more than happy. She's such a good contender for the role. Um, okay, let's just talk really quick about Lonnie's reaction here to seeing Marion. That's this is a level acting right here. Oh, you're damn right. Shaking. He's this dude's literally falling apart. Like that is a level acting right there. Shout out Robert Longstreet. I would love to get that dude on the podcast. Would love to have him on here. 
Oh, you damn right. By the way, guys, hashtag scout on Unita Twitter. We're getting Scout Taylor Compton. Come hell or high water. Yes, please. We need <laughs> Scout. I want to talk to her. Now, Nick, tell me I'm not making this up. I swear to God, it was somewhere around 2015, 2016. An image of Scout Taylor Compton's Twitter people were sharing. It was a tweet she posted. And I remember this happening, but I don't know if it was fake or if it was real. But it said Scout Taylor Compton Twitter, and it said, Yes, guys, the rumors are true. I can't wait to portray the character of Laurie Schrode again. Halloween 3. Hashtag Halloween 3. Yep, that was real. I remember it because it sent me into a frenzy. Because so they were going to legitimately make a sequel to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Yes, here was the timeline. Halloween 3D, right after Halloween 2. And then that fell through. And then nothing for years. And then, okay, we're actually going to, we're going to, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Like it was like 2014, I think. And um, she was in talks and Tyler Maine was in talks. And they both confirmed that they were in talks to come back. Rob wasn't going to direct it. Um, God, I can't remember who the director was that they had eyed. Um, was it the people they were going to use for Halloween 2 originally? Uh, it might have been Alexandra uh, Aja. I, that's, that's what I'm thinking. It was him. Uh, and they were going to, they were going to do it. And then, um, nope. And then it was Halloween returns and nope. And you know why Halloween, Halloween returns fell apart solely Malika Cod spoke about it in an interview recently. Uh, I read oh, it on, really? on bloody disgusting. I think like a week or two ago. Now, hold on. Nick. Now, before you get into it, let me ask you this. The perception I had of Halloween returns was, they bought a, I don't know if they bought a script or they just hired a screenwriter to do the job, but there was a script completely penned for the movie, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. It was, a, it was, Malik said they were like two or three weeks away from starting production. Like it was, what? it was happening. And then the rug got pulled out from under him at the very last minute because whoever the distribution partner was or whatever that, I don't know how that works. They said, we're going to film in Bulgaria. And uh, Malik was like, no, no, we're Halloween. His exact quote was Halloween is the most Americana slasher there is. We're not shooting Halloween in a foreign country. We need to shoot it in the Midwest and in small towns like this. And they would not budge. They said Bulgaria. He said no. Then they offered another country. I can't remember what it was. And he was like, no, I'm not doing that. And because of cost, they didn't want to pony up to film it in America. So Malik was like, nope. And he, it was Malik Akkad who pulled the plug on that. So anybody that didn't know, he pulled the plug because he wanted it filmed in America. He made that like, we are filming it in America, whether you like it or not. And they were like, no, we're not. Well, we will not give you the money for that. So he was like, all right, bye. And that's what happened. <laughs> well, I guess I got to, you got to respect the hell out of that. Yes. I do. Look, I look do. at Leatherface 2017, man. Nobody liked that movie, and that was filmed in some foreign country. This is Bulgaria, a Texas, dude, Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. It's one thing when Leatherface Part 3 goes to Cali to film, but, I, dude, I drove through Midland, Odessa in Texas all the time for work, and that's what it looks like, literally dirt roads. So it's like, and that's still in America, for God's sakes, but Bulgaria? Yeah. What? I was it was really cool that Malik opened up about it finally cuz nobody had opened up about it and he was like I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you exactly. And I respected the hell out of that because he basically said it's on me. Halloween returns didn't happen because of me. But here's why. And I respect that. And I feel like that's partly to do with Mustafa. I feel like because of his dad and the legacy there, he knew, "No, we're filming in the Midwest." Period. It's happening. If you don't like it, then we will not make a movie with you. He stuck to his guns. I respect it. Now, do you remember? Oh God! Did he here we go. Yeah, here. Oh. Uh, did he talk at all in the while they're about to start chanting "Evil dies tonight"? <laughs> did he talk at all about um what the film was going to be about? No, no, he didn't get into details about that. But he just talked about how they were literally right at the precipice of starting filming. Like they had everything 
pretty much ready to go. They just had to pick the, they had to go to the location and someone had to sign a check and Malik wouldn't agree. What produ- what production? Can- who- do you know? Do you know who was going to put this movie out? And which and 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 all it that? was Dimension, and was it Lionsgate? Because it was Dunstan and Melton, and they work with Lionsgate almost exclusively. And that would make sense because Dunstan and Melton actually Lionsgate films a lot of stuff overseas, actually. So I kind of wonder if it was if Lionsgate was also a player in it or twisted pictures. Hmm. Um, but dimension was, I think dimension was the main player in it. And it makes sense because at that time dimension was on the downward slope. So it was like, we're not shelling out two times the budget for you to film in America. Cause they probably didn't have the money. And it's like, well, okay, then we're not making a movie with you. Now, did Mal has Malik ever talked about Hot Rob Zombies Halloween two? Yes, yeah, and he actually is very fond of it. He actually said in that interview, that same interview I'm referencing. Uh, love that. Now get the f out of my way. Uh, love it, Lori. Um, he actually said in that interview, those movies are misunderstood. I really like those movies, and he said, but you know, it seemed like the fan base wanted something different, and that story had run its course. So we wanted to kind of go in another direction, but he straight up said like <laughs> the Godfather, the father of Halloween. Now Malik, he was like, yeah, those movies are misunderstood and I really like them. So I was really happy to hear that from him. And Sean Clark told me that Malik was in complete. The reason we got Rob Zombie's Halloween two the way we did was because of Malik Akkad because dimension and the Weinsteins were going back and forth with Malik every day. No, Rob cannot do this with Michael Myers. Rob really? cannot do this with Halloween movie. Yeah. And Malik was like, I told Rob I wanted him back. And, and Rob didn't want to make a sequel. And he said, I want you back. And Rob said, only if you let me do what I want to do. And he said, here's a sandbox, playing it. Do whatever you want. So Malik was going back and forth with the Weinsteins the entire time Rob was making Halloween 2. And Malik had Rob's back the entire time. He was basically like, dude, do whatever you want. So... Malika Cobb, man, I'll tell you what, very, very underrated. Uh, we, we, I don't think we talk about him enough. The reason I love Halloween 2, Christian loves Halloween 2. That movie is what it is because Malika Cobb stuck up, st- stood up for Rob Zombie to the wine seats and said, he's going to make his movie because I told him he can, and my family owns Halloween. So you have to deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's pretty, cool, man. Yeah. I, I, I wonder, you know. Is Malik, oh, like, after Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, was Malik, I wonder if he's, like, the kind of guy that's, like, always trying to push to make the next movie, or if he knows, like, when to stop. Not necessarily when to stop, or when to say, all right, we just had a really good run, you know. He has, he's less like his father in that way. And what I mean by that is, we know how Mustafa was. Mustafa was like, It made money, pump out another one, pump out another one, make another one. And like, I loved that about Mustafa. I I really did. But Malik is a lot more pragmatic and he's a lot more like big picture. And I think that's, and he talked about, that's why they took a break after Halloween too, because he was like, we needed to kind of course correct because that story had run its course and we needed to really get together with a bunch of people and, you know, figure out where we're going to go from there. So, um, yeah, I think he's a lot more patient with it. I don't think Malik is the type of guy that if Halloween ends makes 200 million worldwide, he will not be at the table the next day. All right, guys, what's the next one? Mustafa would Malik. I I don't take him as that kind of guy. Mm, Yeah. And that's a good thing. You don't want to rush out subpar sequels, you know, love Mustafa, but. There were some movies that got rushed out pretty quickly after the success of a previous one. That <laughs> Halloween five. <laughs> yeah. People say that about Halloween five and it did suffer in areas because of it. Absolutely. Big reason I love it is nostalgia. I can see the problems with it. You know, Halloween and resurrection, another one H2O comes out and they already had the contract, but he was like, all right, let's do it. And then resurrection didn't bomb, but it didn't do well. And he was like, Halloween nine, let's go. Everybody give me your pitches. I'm ready to finance this movie. And I'm like, can you chill? That movie sucks. Oh shit! Though wasn't wasn't Resurrection like two thousand two? 
Yeah, but um, Resurrection went into early stages of production in ninety, late ninety nine, early two thousand. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. so I mean they they were, and then right after Resurrection came out, they were taking pitches for Halloween Nine. They were he was taking pitches himself. So yeah, Mustafa was like, "Are we in the black? Cool, we made money. All right, let's get the next story idea." Um, you know, for better or worse. Mm. Rest in peace, though. Godfather of the Halloween franchise. I got. I, I. I like Malik now. I've never really heard him talk much before about the Rob Zombie movies or what happened with Halloween uh, Returns. I just remember really liking the, the, the. Uh, I guess the synopsis of that movie. You know, Michael Myers was on death row and he gets out. Basically, it's just like that's. That's simple enough, but it works for me. It was so new. You know, it was so fresh. It was something we hadn't seen before. I would have absolutely been down with it. Um, but I also, believe it or not, liked the Halloween 3D script. Um, oh, please tell the, me. Please tell me about that. I have no idea. Um, not the dialogue so much, but the idea basically was that Lori was in a mental institution and Michael came back. Uh, to Haddonfield, and she essentially, you get a good portion of the movie of her in the institution, and she's like batshit crazy at this point. Um, and she, if, if memory serves, she breaks out um, of the institution to face off with him um, like one last time, and uh, the dialogue was awful. I mean, it was awful. There was literally a line in, in the script that was like, the therapist walked into the room, and she was so effing hot. Like the, yeah, there, there was, there was some bad dialogue. Um, and there was a lot of stuff in the script that was like forced 3d in your face. That was like, Oh God. But I liked the idea of Lori being a mental patient flipping, you know, reverse. She's the mental patient that now has to break out to find him. I liked that. I thought that was cool. Man, that, that script is online. Halloween 3D script is online. The Todd Farmer one. Todd Farmer wrote Halloween 3D. Yep. Todd. Farmer oh wow, wrote. Jason X. Yep. And uh, uh, Pat uh, Patrick Melton was going to direct it. No, Lucier. That, no, uh, Lucier. Patrick Lucier. Yep. He was the director. And what happened to that? What killed that? Um, <sighs> there was infighting. Rob didn't want his characters to be continued. If he didn't come back, he felt they ended it the way he wanted it to end. Uh, Malik felt some sort of allegiance to Rob. Um, so that was a part of it. Uh, but the biggest part of it was the fact that Halloween two made half of what Halloween made at the box office. So it made money, but the general rule of thumb in, in film is you have to make two and a half times your budget to start to see profit. The budget on that was 15 million. It made 39. So it made like probably $5 million in profit. Whereas Rob Zombie's Halloween made like $40 million in profit. So definitely makes you step back and go, okay, maybe we shouldn't continue that. Mm. By the way, knife in the armpit. Dear God, that's. Brutal. I know, right? <laughs> and, you know, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I didn't need this. I don't mind it. I love to see the eyeballs pop out. It's gory. It's gruesome. But just a knife in the armpit was enough for me to be like, oh, damn. I know. Christopher Nelson, shout out, man. Awesome effects in this movie. Awesome. Oh, yeah. No kidding. I mean, like I said earlier, everybody thought uh, everybody thought it was CGI Loomis. <laughs> I think this, I think Lil John is from some kind of mad TV show. I yep. used to see Norm McDonald. He's the guy that would always wear the uh, like bowl cut blonde haired wig and wear pajamas like he's yeah. a Yeah. Yep. That was it. That, see, that line is cringy as hell. Michael, you've come home. Like, run. What do you, did you just see what he did to your husband? Like, go. It's, uh. Yeah. I don't think like, if I saw Michael Myers, I'd be like, oh, so you've come home, Michael. No, nah, you'd, <laughs> probably, you'd probably walk up to him and kneel down and start unzipping his pants. You've... Shut the fuck up. 
No, nah, he's, dude. He's too old, man. He's in his 60s now, you know. Dude, this poor mental patient <laughs> is hauling ass. He's like, he's like, what the hell did I do? By the way, we just see Lori knee a doctor in the balls, which is she's goaded for that. Um, but that splits her stomach open again. So please do not tell me anyone that they should have made Halloween ends still be on the same night. What's she gonna do when she when she meets Michael? She'll go to stab him once and split herself open again. Wow. Oh, dude. I, I have no issue saying I am more than happy that this film is years apart. I need something fresh after this. We we have I need something fresh. Do yeah. not give me the moment after again. No, 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 no. I need new. Give me some time. Let's let's let everybody settle down. Ugh. You know, that's what I want. I'm so glad that it's not another immediate sequel. Yeah. I will say, in my opinion, guys, how does everybody feel in the uh, comment section below? I don't know if this is premiering or not. Um, if it is in the chat, if not in the comments, we need Lori Strode to have short hair again in Halloween ends. And it'll, <laughs> it'll make sense after four years to give her short hair. Give me H2O, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Watch Judy. No, I keep saying that Judy. Dude, she, dead. Look, look at that doctor. Like what a dick. <laughs> oh my God. If I'm Judy Dude, Greer, I turn around and go back after that guy. I'm like, mm. Dude, this hospital is just chaos. Dude, oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. That doctor beat the piss. Oh my God. His bodies. There's bodies just pummeling down the stairs. Yes. Dude, what the hell is, what the hell is going on in this hospital? People are beating it. Dude, just imagine if this was the music video to this. Let the bodies hit the floor. Oh, yeah. Hell Let yeah. the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Can we talk about how useless the sheriff is, too? <laughs> well, hey, all you sheriffs are He's useless. He's the worst sheriff in the entire franchise. <coughs> <coughs> where's where's Bo Star when you need him? Dude, right. Go home to your families, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I catch you grow my daughter. I use that shotgun on you. It's like there's chaos everywhere except Lori Strode's room. <laughs> it's like they're at the zoo and they're on the inside of the outside of the glass <laughs> looking in. Now, look, dude, what if when she he's telling Lori this story right here, instead of Lori being like, It's not your fault, what if she would have been like, You didn't shoot him, you son of a bitch? And she starts beating the piss out of the Just cop. Starts beating the shit out of him. I quite honestly thought that's exactly what she was going to do when this moment happened. I mean, really, I thought she was going to be pissed and be like, you didn't st you didn't shoot him. You realize what I've been through. Inside that monster was somebody's baby boy. Shoot. Sorry, guys. I was. Uh, uh, I was yeah, cheesy gordita crunch and nacho fries. <laughs> Somebody's getting Taco Bell. That's right. <laughs> Dude, you from now you got to make sure from now on, whenever you place an order on 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 a commentary, dude, everybody's got. Since we're all right, all right, Taco Bell is that your go to meal right there? Or is this is this a pit stop meal? This is a late night meal. That's the only time I eat Taco oh, Bell. You mean, my, oh, you mean a fourth meal? The fourth yes, meal, as it were. Yes. My go to meal is one hundred percent Chipotle. Like, without a doubt, I probably eat Chipotle two or three times a week. No, 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 no. I'm talking about from Taco Bell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cheesy Gordita Crunch and uh, Nacho Fries. Yep. With a Baja Blast. Always Baja dude, Blast. Dude, they got rid of the Nacho Fries by my T-Bell, and I'm pissed. I, dude, they keep doing it. It was a limited time thing, then it went away. Then it came back, then it went away. Then it came back. It's still here in Ohio. I don't understand why they ever take them away. They're super popular. Like, just leave them on the menu. Those fries have no business being that good. <laughs> dude. It's the cheese. It is the cheese because the fries are just eh. I like the cheese. fries, dude. I'm the cheese are fire. The cheese is fire, man. You know what I do? You know what I do? I'm a sick fuck. I take my cheese and I take a bunch of the fire packets. I pour that shit in the cheese and then I stir. <laughs> oh, man. I yeah, love you it. You are a sick fuck. <laughs> I love the fire sauce, dude. I could drink the fire sauce. Speaking of fire sauce and hot stuff. I had an employee come to my work the other day and he had a box of hot sauces and he was like, do you want to try them? And I was like, how hot? He's like, oh, really hot. I was like, then no, I don't want to like, no. And I was like, what are they called? 
The hottest one was called Fireia. Fireia. <laughs> Fireia. <laughs> Why would I want Fireia? Oh man, that sounds amazing. Don't worry, guys. We are still watching Halloween Kills. Karen is talking to the mental patient, uh, Tavoli. By the way, Christian, did you know that he died in real life? Oh, did he really? Yep. What happened to him? I can't remember. Uh, he died last year. Um, but obviously this film was already done. It was just on the shelf. Um, yeah, he passed away in real life last year. Oh, man. That's you know very creepy. Yes, it is. And and here's one thing that Christian and I have talked about, and I've heard other people talk about this too. This is really sad. It really is. And it shows like the dark side of humanity and the mob mentality. So I get its placement in the movie. But tonally for this movie specifically, I don't think it fits. And, and I think you agree with me there. It's like, it's well done. It's emotional, but it doesn't fit the tone of this movie. I just. I had a theory. I think I shared this with you. I really think that they did this to make the audience not feel so guilty about cheering for Michael Myers killing people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also, you know, it's, it's social commentary in the sense of like, no matter what side you're on, it's the mob mentality mentality is not healthy, you know? Right. Um, Cause it can just lead to stuff like this. So it, it serves a purpose, but I think the way it's directed and the way it's scored tonally just doesn't fit the movie. Um, I feel really bad for the guy. I really, really do. Cause he came to the hospital for help. He's clearly not right in the head. Like <laughs> no. And he's hurt and he came to the hospital for help. And all these jackasses are like, kill this dude. Mike. I mean, could they have at least got a mental patient that looked a little bit closer to Michael? I mean, they got they got yeah. freaking Danny Tavoli. DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> they got Danny DeVito. And people think he's Michael Myers? Surely they've had a picture of the guy on, like, people have seen a picture of Michael Myers, you know, yeah. in the town before. Yeah. Fuck it, dude. If I'm that guy, I'm just waiting for him to come in. I got that fire extinguisher. I just hose all of them. Dear God. Mm. Damn. Uh. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny now, but <laughs> and Jesus Christ, that the fact that oh my God. Oh. Oh Jesus. You see the brains yet? Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> Fuck, man. Guys, we've already dropped. Christian dropped the first f bomb on this stream, so now I've dropped many. Now I know I'm allowed to. I try to, I, you know, I've noticed that I don't get monetization taken away on my videos when I drop f bombs. I really don't. I think if you sprinkle, if you do a little sprinkling, it's not a big yeah. deal. Yeah, we're although you know, shout out to we watched a movie. I don't know how they get away with it. Mike and Jay are dropping f bombs every other word. <laughs> Well, it's it's funny. I think now the the quickest way to get demonetized is to have kid, f kid, not not kid friendly, but kid uh, targeted videos. Like that's the big thing when you upload a video on YouTube now. There's this thing that says, "Is this video?" Yeah. When you go to upload, it says, "Is this video made for kids?" If you have to click no, otherwise you can't monetize it. So yeah. if anything, they're doing the exact they're doing the exact right thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Just... I've never once been like, yeah, it's kid friendly. No, never once. Even if I don't cuss, because in my uploads, I don't. Um on my live streams, it's different. Like sometimes it's organic in the conversation and it just happens. Right. But like my uploads, I don't do it. Just be cool and give me your gun. Just be cool, man. Be cool. Don't be, don't be scared. <coughs> Christian, what is the timestamp that you're at right now? Um, one twenty-one forty-one. Okay, cool. Am I in the ballpark of you? Yep, yep. We're right on cue. This is like my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the movie when he literally tells Lori Schrode, this is not about you. Because she's like, oh my God, Michael wants me. 
It's like, no, he doesn't. But at least they made sense of that instead of just making it think like. Oh, yeah. No, it's, you know? it's handled super well. And that's what I said when I was talking to my buddy Ken. He didn't like Jamie Lee in this movie. And I told him, dude, one, you don't get a lot of her. And two, what you get with her is important. You know, like this speech right here and then her and Hawkins talking earlier about their past. It's important. It's character development for both of them. Yeah. Like, and she always knocks it out of the park with her acting. She's a great actress. I mean, we can't. But this is Karen's movie. Yeah, poor Judy. Just so sad that she died. You know what she said? What? I watched an interview with her the other day. They're like, like, how do you feel about your death? And she was like, look, I knew it was coming before I even got the script. She was like, they're not going to kill Allison because she's the passing of the torch. And they're not going to kill Jamie. So I knew. I was gonna die, but which uh, is God? Why? Did you why know did... that? Why her kill is stylized the way it is? Um, no, I don't. It's an homage we... to Psycho, uh, Marion Crane's death. They did that on purpose. The the jump cuts and the hands and the slicing and all that. Mm, it is, yeah, for Psycho. <clears throat> but why not? Why not do something else besides what everybody expects it to? What if they would have killed the, the granddaughter, dude? Kill Here's the, the granddaughter. Here's the Nobody thing. Nobody would have expected that. Nobody would have expected it. But at the same time, this movie didn't give Allison the spotlight. So if you were going to do that, you would have needed to rewritten the movie and make her the lead. They made Dude, okay. Karen the lead in this movie, so you felt something when Karen died. I guess so. I mean, I, just, I get I, it. You know, I did feel something when she died. I was kind of like, oh, that sucks. But I'd been saying it for months. I'd been beating that drum. She is going to die in this movie. Like, I knew she was going to die in this movie. And people are like, oh, dur, 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 dur. and I'm like, I'm telling you, she's going to die. They're not going to kill Allison because it's just they went the safe route. You know, she's the passing of the torch. And Jamie Lee is going to make it till ends. So Karen's got to bite the bullet. Although I don't even think you needed that ending. I think you could add him, kill the mob, have her looking out the window in the Myers house, and then end it. I really think you could have killed her in ends. I don't think you had to kill her in this one. As old, as old Lonnie Donigan pulling up to the Myers house. <laughs> old drunk Lonnie. Oh, dude, he's been sipping on fucking whiskey all night. <laughs> I love that he's got the curly hair just like his son. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, they look related. That was a great casting. Oh, Lonnie Donigan. Which Donigan is not his last name. Anybody that listens to old music, Lonnie Donigan was a singer from like the like the fifties. This scene is more emotional than it needs to be. What he says to Cameron is just sad. It's like he knows he's gonna die. Yeah, it does suck. See you at the finish line, buddy. <clears throat> I Dude, will why, say, did, why did anybody just go in there with a freaking shot like a like a semi-auto, dude, and just... Yeah, dude, get a 50 cal mounted on that truck. Come out here, Michael. Like, why has no one gone on it with a bazooka yet? Go knock on the door, Lonnie Donigan. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in a car. Are you kidding me? What if Myers was across the street and he came right outside that door and went right into the vehicle and stabbed the kid? Lonnie. Yeah. He just breaks through the window. Bam. Allison's I would, you know what I would have said? All right, all right, kids. Get in the, I would have said, Lonnie Jr., get in the <laughs> driver's seat, and I just want you to loop around the neighborhood and don't stop till you see me outside again. Yeah, That's Lonnie what I Jr. That way the kid's not a sitting duck. No, yeah, I, I totally see where you're coming from. It's all good, guys. Now, Nick, if you ever won the lottery or – where it's financially secure enough to where you could literally yes. just kind of like, you know, design your own house. Yes. I already knew what you're going to have. <laughs> I wouldn't even design it. I would buy the original house in South Pasadena. I, oh, I couldn't, it. I wouldn't buy the original one. I would want to make my own like fresh new. I would just want the ins, the outside to look the same and I would keep the staircase the same, but I'd so have to would make do sure. The Meyer, would, okay. Well then the question for you is, if you had, if you were that financially stable, where you just had money pouring out your freaking oh, I'm doing the Elm Street house. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> You're doing Nancy's house, like I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, um, doing Nancy's house, and I'm gonna replicate Jesse's bedroom. Okay, I figured it's gonna be there's gonna be gay stuff all around. <laughs>
Shout out, man. Nightmare <laughs> too, bro. I love Mark Patton. I have seriously gained such a love for that movie over the, over the past few months. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Demon Freddy. Dude, Mark Patton would not put up with any of this bullshit if he was in this movie. Can we talk about how reckless this is really quick? She just shoots this shotgun as soon as he opens this door. I would have done, done there? this. Dude, I would have done the same fucking thing. Are you kidding me? I would have blasted. Lonnie. Like, oh my God, shoot. Oh, it's Lonnie. Well, well the fact that. Head off. The fact that, I, that they're already in the house and Lonnie Donegan has not once said, hey, who's in there? I would already have assumed he's dead. This isn't that big of a house. You know what I mean? So I would have no. already I would have already been like, let's shoot. I'll tell you what, this climax is how long it took for me to like Allison. I didn't care. I didn't dislike her in 2018, but I just didn't care much for her. Most of this movie, she's kind of sidelined. It's more Karen's movie, but she's really good in this climax. There's multiple moments in this where she like she earns her spot for sure. Now, Nick, let me ask you a question. <coughs> Are you going to be ordering the Steelbook and like a regular Blu-ray or 4K release, or is the Steelbook that's that's good enough for now? And because <laughs> you know that. Well, I say this, dude. I know some people that when a movie comes out, they get the limited edition Steelbook and the regular Blu-ray release of it. Yeah, no, I'll of be everything. Doing... I'll be doing that just because it's Halloween. If it wasn't Halloween, no. But um, it's Halloween. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing that. I never bought a regular release of 2018. I just bought this. I think I bought two steel books of it. I bought the regular regular release first because the steel book was gone. Um, and then I bought the steel book down the road. When Which, uh, which steel book do you have? The Todd McFarlane art. That one's great, but dude, I think I like the other one as much. I do too. I do too. I just, people are reselling them on Amazon for ridiculous prices. And I just, I don't know, because that was a limited edition Best Buy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I bought it day of. I remember when, I remember I, I got off work at like six o'clock that night and I told my wife, I said, get your ass in the car, ready to go. We got a 30 minute drive. I'm going to get Halloween on Steelbook. Yeah. And we got the last one. Yeah, Lonnie I think. Donigan. Oh, Michael's like, hey, buddy. There he is. Get him, Michael. Oh, got that motherfucker. This is probably Cameron's death is my favorite in this movie. Look at that. He Halloween four. Her. Halloween four. Halloween four. He disarms her and she immediately grabs the knife and starts stabbing him. She's smart. Like, yeah, but that 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 reminded me. Top of the staircase. Oh yeah! Shotgun pulled out the hand. Even through throwing the gun down, just like in Halloween Four, I love it. Can we also talk about how again, if ends would have taken place in the same night, Allison literally has a broken leg. So what? Allison with her broken leg and Lori with her split open stomach. We're gonna go take down Michael and Halloween ends on the same night. Come on, come on! Thank God, there's a time jump. This shit's just mean. This is this shit's just mean. <laughs> Michael is literally you. like he and he's doing it on purpose to fuck with her, and that's why I love it so much. And I love that line. Kill that son of a bitch. That was when I was like, "All right, Allison, you're good in my book." When she said, "Come and get me, motherfucker," I was like, "You're good in my book." <clears throat> This is the best part, though. I like the, some of the lighting they do, you know, showing a little bit of light on the side of the face and stuff. Yep. And... This is so mean, and I love it. I know. I love it, too. He's like, oh, you know what? Ooh. Hey, he did cheat on you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Oh man! Come on! Oh, Michael. and uh, by the way, guys, this is absolutely a callback to Halloween Five coming up. Absolutely a callback. Halloween Five. 
the rake. <laughs> the rake. Karen comes in screaming like a madman. Stomp. Damn. One stomp, Karen? Come on. Yeah. Why don't you drop an elbow on him while you're at it? Yeah. Smash his face on the steps. Come on, keep keep going. My brother was, or no, uh, my wife was asking me about this. Like, she thought this exchange here was weird. And I was like, I don't think it is because Karen looks at it like, this is the only way I can save my daughter is to... He, she's got to lure him out. Yeah, she has to lure him out of that house or he's going to kill Allison the same way he killed Cameron right in front of Allison. So it doesn't bother me. This dialogue I could have done without. I almost would have liked him to turn around and say fucking mm -hmm. ass. You know what? Hold on. Let me kill your daughter. I'll be right back, Karen. James Jude has that walk down perfectly. Dude, imagine if you were just like across the street minding your Doesn't own that business. look like Halloween too, right there? The back of oh, those yeah. houses, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so. Very much so. Say I've come to the realization two movies, guys, but David Gordon Green really has respect for the fans. Really I've come does. to the realization though that like I don't ever want to see Michael without his mask because right now it just looks like an old man. <laughs> I will tell you though, I think we are absolutely getting him maskless at one. We're gonna get a clear shot of his face and ends. I really think we will. I pray not. I mean, I like teasing it like Rob Zombie did, and even in here, like I kind of like it because they do. You know, tease it. You see parts of, it, but like I don't want to see his face just full on because then it's just it's gonna make me laugh. Yeah, yeah, I don't necessarily either, but I just look, look at this guy in the <laughs> tiger costume with the gun. The shovel boy. Yeah. Rusty. Um, man, I'm I'm glad Charles Cyphers is still with us. You can tell he is an old man. Yeah. But look at him, man. It's 2021, and you watched you watched Sheriff Brackett in a horror movie a few days yeah. ago. I mean, how cool is that? Even though he literally just, even though he literally just basically hand, got handed the script to the original movie and said, just do those lines again. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to get scared. I love Michael, like, sizing up the mob here. He's, like, looking around like, all right. I, 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 I just wish that instead of taking the beating, he would have whip, whipped ass from the start. Yeah, I think I, the thing was they were a lot more coordinated at the beginning. You know, they're ready to take him down. And then when he gets back up, I don't think any of them were ready for that. They weren't prepared. Like, holy shit, this guy just yeah. got back up after all that. He did stuff. Oh, he's taking some bullets now. Damn. Yep. Three bullets. Damn. Still getting up. <laughs> Still getting up. Took three bullets. Dude, that's a four by two. <laughs> just getting his here ass comes, whooped. Here comes Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Dude, is it doing his PJs swinging, a sh swinging that shovel for dear life? Dude. Where's Iron Lady? I'm looking for her. So am I. I really like what Karen does here. And nacho fries, yeah. They don't have nacho fries anymore? <laughs> I told you they got rid. I told you they got rid of them. Uh, the cinnamon twist. The twist. Have you ever tried the cinnabons? Yeah. Did she text you back? <coughs> cool. There she goes. Yeah, my wife is coming home from work soon, and she has a Taco Bell next door to her work, so I'm having to bring it home. There you go. <laughs> Some people have complained about this, like monologue. Well, how does she know? Well, how does she know that he transcends? Explain that to me. She I hasn't seen him that, in forty no, years. But I think it's, I think she is surmising it from what happened in the last film, because she's like, dude, we did, we threw everything at this guy, and he still got up, walked out, and started killing people again. Like, I think she's saying the only way she can justify it in her mind is that, like. 
you, you can't beat him that way because I tried and it didn't work. All right, Nick, I need you to explain something to me right now. Okay, so right now Michael is on the ground. Karen is on the front porch with her granddaughter. I mean, yes. Karen's on the front porch with her daughter. Okay, Michael's about to get up and whip everybody's ass. And I'm trying to understand. Okay, hold. On, let's just let this play out. And I want to. I want to watch everything. All right, Michael is slicing and dicing. I'm loving every second of it. Now, is Karen seeing what's going on 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 uh, uh, by the mob right now? Because I'm kind of confused. At at is this all in real time? While Karen's up on the porch with her daughter, while this is happening with Michael, I don't know if it's in real time. She's not seeing it um, because that's, it was at that's least confusing to me. Away. Are they gonna figure that? Are they gonna are they gonna piece this together and ends? Because I'm thinking she's in the sh- she's sh- I, I'm I'm thinking to myself she's in front of the house. They're in the street, and all this is going on. You know? Yeah. No. No. I totally get what you're saying, but I think that the mob is dead at this point when you're seeing Karen. And right where did there. Michael go? I guess is the qu- question then. Well, we established earlier in the movie, there's a back door to the house that isn't locked. We did establish that. So the way I took it is while they're all outside in the hoobla of the ambulances and all that, after he kills the mob, he goes right back into his house through the back door and he's waiting. And she goes up there and meets her demise. Swing that bat, Michael. I love that the bat, the, I love that his mask at times almost looks like it's got a little smirk to it. Oh, I know. And that's all lighting. And and that is just, that's lighting and angles. And they do a great job. What? Here's what I don't understand. This is one complaint I have. You're out there tending to Allison, but nobody's coming here and taking Cameron and Lonnie's body. They're right. just chilling there dead. There's only, there's only so many medical workers, I guess. So so what I'm trying to understand is the mob gets decimated in the street. We don't see what happens to Michael after that, but we have to anticipate that he disappears and then the police and medical team all show up, right? And Karen is in front of the Myers house. And we're to, we're to assume that Michael is now a wall. <clears throat> and Karen just got this whole weird things going on where she's feeling something by the window and there's Michael all of a sudden. So we don't, we're there. There's a little bit of timing that we're not seeing that you think will probably will be explained a little bit more in ends. I think there has to be some connective tissue there in ends. There has to be. There, yeah. And if, if, if that's the case, totally fine because I'm all for soap operas, spore- storytelling, and chapter and verse stuff. I'm all for that, but I I also just want to I want to eventually just understand what happened here because there's clearly a time thing that happened here. This is not in chron- chronology what they showed. All right, when you're on Peacock, guys, right there, make sure you hit cancel. That way, the credits play before prom night starts playing. That way, yes. you can hear the the ghost, ghost. song at the end. Yeah, man, that is the fifth time I've watched it. That's the fourth time you've watched it. And I'm done I, for a while. I, so am I, but I stand in the same camp. I really enjoy it. I really do. I mean, I really enjoy the movie. I, <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Aaron Armstrong, uh, 1978 shape. <clears throat> Don't know why they didn't use James Jude, but. Might have been second uh, unit, for God's sakes. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, I still really enjoy the movie. I mean, my only complaint with this movie, there, there's two complaints. There's some cringy dialogue and tonally the whole mental patient thing in the hospital and everything just doesn't really fit um, the tone of the movie. But, dude, overall, it's I mean, I I just think it's it is exactly what I was expecting. It was exactly what I was expecting. And I walked out of it happier than I did with 18 because with 18, I had these high hopes that it was going to be the bee's knees, like the true sequel to Halloween. It just wasn't. And this one was, you're going to get gore. You're going to get carnage. You're going to get craziness. And it delivered. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, this is the 12th movie. Can you believe that Halloween is about to outdo Friday the 13th? I can't believe that. That's I mean, shocking to me. 
it wouldn't be that way if the rights issues with Friday hadn't been what they are. But given where we are, yeah, I can believe I, it now. That's un-American to me, man. That's un-American to me. Look, I love Halloween. Not as much as you. Halloween's great. I think that Friday the 13th is the biggest and greatest franchise ever. Even though Nightmare is my favorite, Friday the 13th is like the just freaking workman's hey, horror movie. I, I don't disagree with that statement, but I would say at this point, where we are right now, out of the big three, Michael is the most popular. I mean, he's... Because he's got movies. Because he's, he's got the movies, man. I mean, I know, I know. But like Halloween 2018, like that movie did stupid money for a slasher movie. I mean, it was like 250 million worldwide. No other slasher sequel or movie in general has ever touched that. Like, but I will say, Friday can absolutely make 200 million dollars worldwide, especially with how long it's been. Um. Well, dude, the it it refuses to die. There's more kids. There's kids. There's kids half my age now, 15, 16, that are finding these movies and falling in love with them. Yep. It, it just it's 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 insane. They're they're missing a golden opportunity. There there's really no other way to put it. Um, the slasher subgenre is alive and well right now, and if you're gonna strike, you better strike very soon, because. It's not going to last forever. I mean, we've seen it come in waves in our lifetime and before, you know, we were even like cognizant of what was happening. If you're going to strike, strike now. Because if you don't, if you wait three or four more years, you might pull in 50 million worldwide instead of 100 million. And that could be the difference in seeing another movie in that franchise for the next 10 years. So you got to strike, man. Victor, yeah. Sean, y'all got to agree to whatever deal is offered to you and just get another movie out there. Uh, I know that I know Sean, I know Sean Cunningham certainly wants to, he's taught, he talks so all about it on the script, Jason X special features. And he's all like, you know, when we do the, he says like, he even says, he says, she goes, you know, when we do the next one, it's gotta be special for a number of reasons because the fans deserve the best. This is the 13th one. So it's poetic. I really want. He also said, "I really want to push things to where it's more than what the audience is expecting, but still giving the audience." He's like, "I, I know from trial and error that people want Jason the way they know and love him in the woods with that mask, but I really want to be able to make this film so special." So it's not like Sean doesn't want to do it, but you know, oh my god. No, I know. And, and, and I believe that, you know, I believe there is sincerity there. I believe that he wants that. I'm sure deep down somewhere, Victor wants that too. It's just the pissing contest of who gets the most credit, who gets the most money. That's the problem. And that shit just needs to die. Like yeah, I know it. it needs to die tonight because <laughs> the fans don't care about that. They're not going to walk away from the movie and be like, Thank you, Victor Miller. Not you, Sean S. Cunningham. No, they don't give a shit about that. I mean, I think we've come to a point to realize, guys, whether we want to admit it or not, whether I'm okay with admitting it, but Blumhouse runs the horror genre right now. I mean, they just do. Like, Jason Blum has a briefcase full of money that I'm sure he is just foaming at the mouth to offer to Victor and Sean. Just foaming. So, dude, you can't. It, it's really hard to screw up Friday the Thirteenth, but if anybody can screw it up, it's Plum. <laughs> all like, right, he I, can do a good job too. I mean, just hire good people to make this stuff, man. Hire fans, you know. Hire people that understand the the film and the product and the legacy. Like we talked about it uh, with Piz on our last episode with Freddie versus Jason, how they hired Ronnie Yu, And I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, are you totally blind to the fan base and, and the legacy of this character? So don't do something stupid like that. But, and, and I will say David Gordon green was a great choice for this trilogy. He clearly has an eye and a love for the Halloween franchise. The problem with this trilogy so far has just been Danny McBride's, piss poor human to human dialogue at times where it's just like 
really like nobody says that like in 2018 peanut butter on my penis like that's just an example of like what why this isn't pineapple express too like i love pineapple express one of my favorite comedies of all time but there's a line with halloween so i don't know yeah it's it's yeah <laughs> we can we can work on that a little bit yeah um who this knows has been our longest episode and yeah. like weeks months well i've got to edit some of this because <laughs> of the the weird edit the weird my funky internet problems but we're not taking out my taco bell order no so i'm just i'm just edit. cutting out where my where we started getting really lag lagging so but don't yes, worry guys I mean, if we did that you, you might you, you might have to have paused your movie at a certain point and fast forward or backed it up a little bit when you were watching but you know just deal with it yeah just deal with it <laughs> you know so. But yeah, no, and hey, to everybody that's that watched with us or that has seen kills and and just watched the playback, I really hope you guys enjoy the movie. I really do. And if you don't, I totally respect why you don't. But either way, make sure to go out and support Halloween Ends next year because the reason that these movies are coming back is because we're paying to see them. So you want Jason back, you want Freddy back. We're getting Ghostface back too. Go out and see these movies. Um, yeah, this was fun. Oh my god, dude! Yeah. I gotta just I gotta eat my words. Halloween Kills is at ninety one point seven million dollars right now. Yep, in the box office. I looked earlier. See, tonight. here's the thing: nobody that ran their mouth about this movie doing shitty in the box office is saying anything now. But I will say I was fucking wrong. I was wrong. I thought it was gonna, it was gonna, it was gonna settle at settle around like sixty five million. No, when it's all said and done, I think this movie's gonna pull in anywhere from one twenty to one forty worldwide. Because this week you're gonna see an uptick because it's Halloween. Um, Halloween Day, it'll probably make like five or six million just on that day alone in its third week of release because that's what twenty eighteen did. You're going to see it settle around 120 to 140 worldwide when it's all said, all said and done, which is like 100 million less than 2018, but $20 million budget and a day and date streaming service. That's a win. If you make $100 million with a slasher movie, the 12th movie in a franchise, dude, you're fine. It's pretty amazing. Just for, okay, really quick before we end, Friday the 13th, 2009. It made a hundred, didn't it? Let's see. All right, budget was nineteen million, and it made ninety two point seven million. Halloween Kills is basically like there right now. That's crazy. In a week and a half, that's what I'm saying, dude. That's crazy. Slashers are back Cash again, and, and you, you got to think about this too. I, this is one of the only times I've ever seen this happen, and this is what Sean Cunningham said: Paramount and and Paramount and New Line split the cost fifty fifty on that. That is nuts, you know. Yeah. That's... And real quick, all right, Nightmare on Elm Street. Let's see. The Nightmare remake, I think, made ninety to one hundred, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> now I I'm fine admitting to myself that between the three of those that Nightmare maybe he has the least fans. I could be totally wrong on that. At least in my world, I find less people that are Nightmare fanatics than Halloween or Friday fanatics. But oh my god! Okay, it cost a little more, thirty five mil, but it came in at a hundred and seventeen million worldwide. Yep. So that's healthy. <clears throat> yeah, that movie was uh, profitable. I think the only reason you didn't see a sequel to it is because of the 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 fan reaction, not the box office. The box office was good. Mm. I'll be damned. Christian, well, our next episode <clears throat> will be filmed in November. <clears throat> it's depressing. It is, but you know what? No, we're going to keep... Halloween never ends for us, dude. And you know what we need to do soon? We're just going to do it. Casual commentary. Because, look, we can't do commentaries on just the movies that I 
we love love. I'm thinking, dude, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm just gonna watch this movie with the people, talk about what I like, break it down, dude. Eventually we gotta do a commentary on this son of a bitch right here. Just do the Elm Street like remake. The movie, so let's do it. No, I know you do, but I, I'm not a big fan of it. I would love to sit down with somebody, discuss what we see, because we can talk about these movies till we're blue in the face, but when we're discussing what we're physically seeing in the moment, that's something that it's it's a different game when you when you tackle something like that. And you know, I think the Elm Street remake would be a fun one to look at again and just I don't know. I agree. I want to change think, my mind. I think November is a perfect time for that because guys, we've already told you on previous episodes, October loaded December loaded. We got plenty of Christmas horror movies to talk about in December. And I'm excited for that. Hopefully oh, yeah. we do a silent night, deadly night, casual commentary. Would for love sure. that. Without question. But November is that weird spot where it's like, what do you do? Christian and I have talked about, we're going to have some guests on. We're going to try to work that out. But also, I think Nightmare would be perfect. Perfect right in there. Nightmare November. Nightmare November. So there you go. All right. Well, we'll figure that out, guys. We're just we're already foreshadowing for the month. But this was fun. Hope you enjoyed this uh, commentary. Casual com- commentary. And uh, we'll see you guys sooner rather than later. Y'all have a great rest of your day. And thank you for watching the you need a horror podcast. That's right. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror Podcast. You need it, we got it. Thank you for listening.